Welcome, welcome. We're so grateful you're here today. We're so grateful to be here. We are going to help. You know, I think whenever there's a time of crisis, um, I think it's just such a great thing to say to ourselves, what can I do to help? And, and you all have risen way above the occasion, the number of masks, the number of things we've done, just in general, what can I do to help? So today is just an example of um, us asking ourselves, what can we do to help? Uh, we can't be on the front line, but what we can do is we can contribute to Feeding America, feedingamerica.org. Lots of organizations obviously have been on board, and so I thought we could do this. We could, we probably would have had the so along anyway. We've had two, they're free, um, but maybe if you can, dig in your pockets a little bit. I'm gonna tell you how to contribute. We wanted to make sure we ran it through Fit to Stitch. Fit to Stitch is a nonprofit, so when you contribute to Fit to Stitch, Fit to Stitch is owned by a company called Hanging On by a Thread Productions, and it's all nonprofit. So if you'll do that, it's in increments of $5. You'll go to the center column of silhouettepatterns.com page. Right at the top it says Feeding America, so along. You can click on that. It will take you to the donation page on fittostitch.com. And right at the top, it'll say Feeding America has a short little dialogue. And it'll have, you can put click one, it's a $5 increment. So that means if you wanna do $20, you do times four, whatever. There's some examples there. And that's it. Your receipt, you'll get an automatic emailed receipt. And that's, it has the, our Fit to Stitch or Hanging On by a Thread Productions. Um, our nonprofit status number, so you can use that on your tax return when you go to do tax returns. Okay, so any questions regarding that, let me know and I'm happy to help. Our goal is to feed America, and I think there's a lot of hungry children out there and ask their parents. So this is to help their parents help them, is really what it is. We're not gonna be judgmental. We're not gonna wonder why they need help. We're just gonna help, all right? That's the deal. Okay, so what we're doing today is the 619. It is the Jessica's halter. Easy, easy, easy pattern. We'll have it in and out in no time. So I've got a few other little things I did for you just to get your money's worth. <laughs> and so we, um, we'll show you that as we go along. But first, a little pick up from where we were a couple weeks ago. Our first sew along we had the jean jacket. And I know I think you all have seen me wear the jean jacket. The second sew along we had was the pattern of the month for April, which was Jag's woven pants. And so I wanna pick up and show you that I've completed that outfit, top, bottom, everything, and it's on a mannequin. So we're gonna kinda of go over and show you what we've done. And we've got both on a mannequin. So this first one is exactly the outfit I've got on. And what I've got on is the halter, you can see there, and then 196, except I've just got it tied in the middle, or, you know, tied, I did the halter longer and then I did the 196 over it. So again, there's my halter. You can, and this is why I say I love wearing these halters under things because they have such a pretty neckline. And you don't have to wear them bare, and you can just make um, th three good patterns to make over them are the 196, the one I have on, which is the cardigan, four-way cardigan. Um, jean jacket, I had that on with it. The jean jacket is a great one to wear with it. And also 83, it's called Colette's One Piece Wrap. It's a great alternative to wear with the halter also. I've done all three and I've done them a lot and I really like them. But I also wanted you to catch up. This is the Jags woven pants that I finished where I did the stripe. What we sewed along was stripes going vertical on one side, horizontal on the other side. And then I wanted you to see the little jacket I made. And this is a new jacket pattern. It's not really a jacket pattern, it's a sweater pattern. But the other night when you asked me, I could not come up with a number. It's 220. It's um, Brunello's sweater. It should be done, or it tells you to be to do it in a knit, but I, you can do it in a woven, you can get away with it, and it just, I love it. I mean, I absolutely love it, especially with a fabric like this, where you can see that the back side is one way and the front side is another way. So I did the checks, then I did the stripes. The stripes, that's just the back side of the fabric is all it is, so it'll match the pants. And then on the front, what I did is I turned the whole thing on the bias. So you can see that whole entire thing's on the bias there. You can see the French dart. And then the only thing I really did different is I love the fact that when you cuff this up, you see the differences. It almost forms like a little cuff at the bottom. 
So I went ahead and, and just rolled that around for the cuff. So great, exactly what I wanted, just a casual, easy kind of, you can call it a jacket, but it's really not. It's, like I said, 220, it's a sweater, Brunella Cuccinelli, high end, it's beautiful. It's just so beautiful, this little jacket or whatever you want to call it is. But anyway, so that's finished and completed. Okay, so let's go to sewing. Um, and then any questions you have, I'm happy to answer. What type of light do you have by your sewing machine? Gosh, I got this a zillion years ago. Um, let me find my glasses and I'll figure out what it is. Um, you know, I did trade shows for 20 something years and at the end of every trade show, the guys who had, you know, this kind of stuff, they didn't want to take them home so they'd always sell them for less. Those of you who've been to a trade show know full well what I'm talking about. And so this was, I remember because I had to pay a whole bunch extra to get it home because it was so heavy on the airplane. I don't know what this is. Let me turn it off, but I, I love the light. I just, it can't be too bright for me when I'm sewing. I don't know, you guys. I, I don't know. I, I think it's an ot light. It seems to me I remember it being OTT, but I don't see the name on it anywhere. And, but I really do like it. I really do like it. Oh, sorry. I got tilted around. Better? Okay. Okay. Um, I want to talk about it a little bit, just about needles. Because we're doing a survey. <laughs> so I've been playing around a lot with needles. And um, I'm going to kind of expedite your learning on needles and tell you what I've learned. So all industrial machine needles, they're all the same size. They're all the same size. They're all called 7010. You know, the, they're just the first number and the second number are just the same number, but just a different country. So one is a European number, one's an American number. But anyway, 7010. All 7010 needles are exactly the same. When you go into an industrial machine, an industrial machine is completely round all the way around the needle. A home sewing machine is got a flat back to it. And what we know about sewing machine needles, we've all put them in many times, the flat back goes toward the back. It's done that way so that you don't mess up how the needle goes in the machine. And so they don't really tell you much about needles except that. On an industrial machine, there is in the back of the needle, and it's way too small for us to see, the back of the needle, and remember it's round at the top, but the back of the needle has a little cone to it. And that's how you tell the front of the needle to the back of the needle. And as long as you put that little cove thing to the back, and it's just because the, you know, it's, it's flat. It's like the top of the needle being flat, but the back of the needle is flat. And as long as you put the eye forward and put that to the back. The reason I'm telling you this is because I want to uh, give away a few packs of needles. So I sew with an industrial needle, I guess is what I'm trying to tell you. I've got a 7010 industrial needle in this machine that's round all the way at the top. And I don't see any issues with sewing. I've asked every sewing machine dealer I know if they know there's a difference. No, they don't know. They don't know. It, it clamps. There's no problem with the clamping. There's no problem with the sewing. Why is the differences? They don't know. But here's the bottom line is that these industrial needles are very inexpensive compared to these regular needles. And we're spending a lot of money on needles. If y'all don't care, then don't worry about it. Buy the flathead pay a dollar a needle and go on down the road. But I'm really just trying to come in with how can we save cost and what, what costs really matter and what costs do not. So if you place an order today, tomorrow, the next day, and I'm not gonna give away very many, I like 10 of you. I'm gonna give away just a 10 pack of needles. But you have homework, you gotta come and just shoot me an email that said this is my order number and you know I want a pack of needles. And again, don't go crazy you guys because we can't, you know, we're not going to give needles out to everybody. But what I'm trying to figure out is make sure the needle's put in right. I don't think it'll make a difference in your sewing machine. doesn't make any difference in the shaft. Again, the needle is the exact same size. The clamp is, everything's the same size. In my machine, I've got a designer Topaz 50, a Viking. It's made no difference. Okay, I gave them to a friend of mine. It's made no difference. I'm not ready to say they don't make a difference in any machine. You have to put the needle in correctly. You have to pay a little more attention to how the needle's put in. 
Okay, with that said, let's make our halter, okay? Uh, will you have an online pattern making course again in the future? Yes, probably the fall, September. Usually we go September through like, um, September through like January. Right now though, starting the beginning of May, we have a pants fitting online. Pants fitting online, and then we'll have a blouse fitting, and then we have a tops fitting. So get into those three, you guys, because you know what I figured out from this coronavirus is I'm never leaving my house again. <laughs> I love being home. I didn't realize how much work traveling was. So that's what that's what I've discovered. I'm sure we've all discovered wonderful things as well as the negative, but the wonderful thing is I love being at home. It's amazing how much time I have. Okay, so what I did to prepare for this is I picked my fabric, and my fabric I chose 3238. It's a red snaky kind of fabric, and I did my cutouts. So there's only four pieces. There's the halter front, the halter back, the and then the bra cup on the inside. You don't have to do that. It's like a little support on the inside, and that's actually what I'm going to make first. So I'm going to take my front and back pieces. Um, the only real difference between the front and the back is that the back is up higher, the front is lower. What I do is I put a little pin on the front and I just leave it from there. So one pin signifies the front. Come up with any little code you want. And it's not that you can't tell the difference, it's just a little easier, faster to tell the difference if it's got some kind of marking. All right, and I'm going to sew the side seams. I'm gonna serge these together. You don't have to, you're dealing with a knit but it's just a little, you know, just a little more finished. So that's what I'm gonna do. All right, and again, this is not gonna take long. It's not a long project, so if you have questions, let us know. And you guys, I've gotten lots of feedback about why you watch. And you know what? It's all good. Any reason you watch is good for us. I really just wanted to kind of see, was there something I was missing or something I wasn't doing? So we love you watching. And we don't care if you're sewing, to be honest, okay? We love you watching. All right, so what I did prior is I took a two inch wide piece of elastic. Two inch wide elastic is really comfortable. So that's why I'm using it. You could use any width, it doesn't matter. And you're just going to take it and wrap it around your rib cage, okay? And just pull it a little tighter then, because you want it to be firm. This is kind of going to be like a little inside sports bra. So I've measured that to the width I want. I'm going to put it under my sewing machine. And I'm just going to sew the elastic in a circle. Whenever I sew the elastic in a circle, I have a tendency just to kind of make a little square. Elastic. There's no right and wrong. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm making a little sports bra that goes inside. Okay? And I've got my elastic now and it's in a circle. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to quarter the little, I'm going to call it my bra. I'm going to quarter the bra. So I'm going to put those seams together. And if you feel like it's a little easier for you, you can do more than just quarter. You could eighth if you need to. Um, you're going to quarter your the bra and you're going to quarter your elastic. So I just put it together, put pins in the end, change it up, put the pins together, and now put pins in those ends. Okay, that quarters it pretty quick and pretty easy for you. And again, if you feel like quarter is too far away that you need it to, you know, you want it to be closer together, you could certainly do that. Okay, so I'm gonna start with one of the pins at one of the quarters, and I'm gonna start, and I'm gonna sew the wrong side of the elastic, I'm sorry, the right side of the fabric, I'm gonna put it up. So just an FYI as to why I'm doing that, 
is because uh, the reason we did the YouTube on Thursday night, if you got a chance to watch that, was I was trying to show you if you didn't, if you had a halter pattern and you didn't have a little bra on side, how to make it and the purpose, the purpose of having that. So we just showed and we, I gave a detailed explanation as to what side the elastic will go on and why. So that the whole goal was to just kind of help you get the logic on that before we started today. Okay, so I've got, um, remember the wrong side of the fabric is going to, of the bra, is going to go against the wrong side of the halter. So I want the elastic on the right side so that the elastic is what's against my body, not all this little ruffly edge. I watched the video about the bralic and said, are you going to be doing that today? Um, I am doing that. That's what I'm doing right now. Yeah. Where do we donate? Go to, there's two places you can go. Center page, thank you for asking. Center page on Silhouette Patterns, center column. Main page, center column, top link. It will take you right to Fit to Stitch. Or you can go to fittostitch.com and click on that donate button. That is our regular donate button for um, fit to stitch you know the two patterns that people have donated but the top portion now we added just the feeding america donation part so you can either go to silhouette patterns and that link will take you to fit to stitch or you can go right to fit to stitch okay so i'm sewing the elastic onto the bra like thing okay and what i'm going to do is once i've got it anchored and situated hold back with one hand one part and sew this to the elastic. My edge does not need to be finished. I need to make sure it's flat, but if you don't hold the back, it won't, it'll kind of curl. When you stop, leave your needle down so that it will uh, anchor for you so that it won't pull out when you go to pull. Yeah, don't let your fabric curl up on you. With my thumb right here, I'm feeling how much elastic, so don't let the elastic get too far in. You want it to be pretty even all the way. And with the back hand, I'm, I'm holding the elastic so that it's straight. All right, that's the first set of pins. Again, leave your needle down. I'm gonna take out those pins, and I'm gonna go to the second grouping of pins. And for me, it's a side seam in this case. I didn't pin the side seams, I just left them, okay, as a marking. I use the side seams as a marking. So just straighten this out. Again, see my thumb there is feeling how much elastic is underneath that fabric so that I don't get too much. It certainly doesn't have to be exactly straight, but you don't want it to be real catty. And I'm to my second point. Everybody understand what we're doing? Stop, leave my needle down. Is there a reason why your serger is at a lower level table? No? No. But I do find that when I sew, I notice that I hold my shoulders up a lot. And so I notice that when it's lower, I'm a little more relaxed when I sew. That's, I've noticed that. But no, that was not the original intent. It just worked. All right, so there's the third section I'm working on now. Put those two pins together. This is really easy to do. It's not critical that it be exact. The only thing I would do is say is why I did that video for Thursday night is just as a comfort level, you want the elastic, the this fabric to be not against your skin. You want the elastic to be against your skin. So sewing the elastic to the right side of the fabric will allow that to happen. If you just don't like elastic on your skin, this elastic, I have it on, I find it to be very soft. You can always do a little casing and just sew the casing on like a waistband if you wanted to do that that way. Kind of your call. Okay, and then the last quarter is back to where we are. I'm going to pull this and make sure I've got it enough stretch.
back where we started from. Um, I overstitched that, so I'm just going to clip my threads. And I'll show it to you. Okay, here we go. So that's my little halter unit. It's kind of upside down, but there you go. Okay. Just going to show that little camera thing there. I mean, just show the little halter, and there you have it. Easy peasy. Okay? So I've made the inside so that the elastic finishes off the edge. There's no hemming. It's kind of hemmed. And again, if you notice, this right side of the fabric is what's going to be against your skin. And so you can see that it's all the roughy gathered fab fabric that's kind of gathered is going to be against the blouse, so you're, it's not going to touch your skin. So this is a nice way to just finish it off, okay? Okay, then let's do the sides. Oh, are you using a straight stitch? I am. Yeah, I'm using a straight stitch. I've got a 3.5 as my stitch length. Anything else? Any other questions that we can ask? This is really easy, you guys. Okay, now, the one I have on, the halter I have on, I lengthened. I lengthened four inches. And I lengthened it because, uh, I'll just tell you, because I wanted to wear it long over leggings. I wanted to tie, I thought about the whole outfit, like what I was gonna wear with it. I think when you're making a halter that's like, um, you know, a black, it's gonna be go with everything. But this was more specific that I wanted this halter to go with this outfit. Not that I couldn't take them apart and wear them with other things. So basically what I'm telling you is I lengthened it and I put slits in the side. I did not do that with this one. I just made it, I think I did too. I made, I lengthened this four inches also. This is the front. So again, I'm going to put this in the front. And I'm gonna show you, this isn't in the guide sheet because uh, the guide sheet isn't having you do it this way. So I'm just gonna show you this as an option. So you take the front because you're not gonna serge the side seams together you're actually going to you're going to finish that. So I'm going to serge all um, the three sides of the top, the sides and then the hem. tunic is long or top is long it has those split side seams and I really like them so I thought I would show you how to do that just as an option to the pattern the pattern just has you finishing the hem um, just like anything and so you're going to do that to the front and you're going to do that to the back as well and see, this is always exciting because it, it, sewing to me is kind of like putting a puzzle together. The goal is to end up with no pieces left. So we only have four pieces and we're already on piece number four. That's kind of fun. is about six, six inches up from the hem. We're going to sew this together with a sewing machine so those edges are all finished. And we're going to stop six inches up from the hem. That six inches is just something I'm creating for me. You could stop 10 inches up. You could stop whatever number you want, however long you want that slit to be, that's all that matters. So I'm going to take this and go X number of inches up, and I'm going to come in now, I'm going to backstitch, because that's going to be left all by itself, and then I'll show you how to finish off that side little vent. So 
So we're just stitching this together with a sewing machine after the edges are finished, as opposed to serging it. If I wasn't wanting a slit, I would just serge it, just like I did with um, the bra top. So I left that slit. I'm just going to make sure both sides are the same. I did seven inches. You can't ask me why I did seven. I don't know why. On some previous top in some previous life, seven works good. But you do want to do both on the same side. Okay, you don't want one different than the other. Again, I'm going to back stitch and come right on up the sides. Kind of look ahead to make sure your seams are going to match. All right. All right, so we've actually got a front and a back together and we have the bra done. If you don't insert the bra, how does that change the outcome of the halter top? We are going to insert the bra, but I think you're just asking if you're not going to. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't at all. Um, the bra, you know, this is thin fabric. It's just a thin layer. I put up a lot of fabrics over the last few days that are good for the halter top because there's so many great fabrics. Silks, it doesn't knit, woven, it doesn't matter what it is. There's so many great tops, so many great fabrics. And I think if you really understand the look that I intended this to be, it was you can wear it all by itself. It certainly wasn't ever what I intended. It's such a beautiful look underneath jackets, underneath other things. And so I don't think it, I think it penetrates all ages. But all you have to do is, is finish the edges with a, you know, we're gonna finish it by sewing the bra in. That's how it finishes. But you just leave that out and turn a seam allowance under and finish it that way. It's very easy to do. Would the bra insert work would this bra insert work in the tank top? Sure. Yep, same idea. I've done it on a on a PBS one time. We took the tank top and made a, a sports bra out of it. So yes, same thing. Are you going to insert the bra cups? I am. I'm not going to do them how I'm going to tell you to do them because I'm not going to get naked in the mirror and do all that for you. But I'm going to explain it to where you'll understand it, okay? <laughs> Are you using the fabric helper to choose your straight stitch? The fabric helper? I don't know what that is. So I guess I must not be. No, I just, I don't ever change my machine off of straight stitch. I don't, you know, I'm sure it has a great number of stitches. I don't use any of them. I use a straight stitch and a buttonhole, and that's, I shouldn't say that's all, but pretty close. It would, anyway, probably not much else. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just press these seams open, because remember, um, for the side pleat, for that little vent in the side, I didn't serge it all the way down. So you're going to want to press it open and just give it a little bit of, just give it a little bit of press. Because I'm actually going to do the hem before I finish the rest of this. So here what I'm going to do is turn those seam allowances under. I'm just going to turn, you know, get, press the seams open even when they're not stitched, just down at the bottom here because that will kind of help me to stitch it. And you're just going to stitch one side, and that just looks super darn good, and then I'm going to do the other side. And again, I have a tendency to, when I'm doing these little open vents, to press them before I stitch them. just think they kind of, you don't have to, just think they give you a little more help and placement. Alright, that's it. I'll go back and let's go ahead and what we'll do is we'll hem the bottom of this thing and when you do these little vents I'll put my bra cup over there when you do the little vents what you'll want to do is do the hem first so in this case I'm going to do about an inch hem so I'm just going to turn that up and we're going to stitch right across we're going to do the bottom and the top the, I'm sorry the front and the back the same way I don't need to back stitch because I'm going to come over later and stitch it, you know, over stitch it. You 
guys always get to know how we're doing. How are you all doing? Everybody okay? For many of you, I love the emails that you're sewing, that you're doing okay, that you're sewing for others, that you're helping others. We're going to wind up. I'm going to sew you. I'm going to show. We're going to sew a little headband. And the headband, we'll, we'll show you later. Okay, so I did the front or the back. I did one of them. I'm not sure which one it is. And I... I'm going to clip those threads and do again for the back now, or do the front, whatever I do. What are the stitch, what are the, what are the stitch lines and stitch width settings on your serger? Um, I'm at a medium for the width, and I'm at a three point, three point length. What size is your sew steady table? 16, there's a 16 inch ruler here, so it's probably 20 by 18 maybe 20 by here i got a tape measure it's a silver pattern tape measure how about that i just happen to have it on hand 25 by 22. when you use a woven material would it be better to add a zipper no 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 you don't need a zipper you guys you're there's not here let me explain that um there's nothing to go the, it, you know, the halter doesn't go in at your waist. You could put darts in, I guess. If you decided to make it really fitted and put darts in, then you would have to get it all. The only reason you put a zipper in is you can't get the waist over the bust. When the waist becomes smaller than the bust, then you put a zipper in to expand the waist so you can get the waist over the bust. All right, so that would be if you did something to your fit um, where it, you made it, you know, you took in darts or something, but in this pattern, exactly as it is, you don't need to do anything. You would not, even if you did it in a woven, I did it in a silk. You wouldn't have to do anything. Okay. What is the pattern of the blouse you have on? It's the halter. The 195. I'm sorry, 195. 619. 619 is the halter, and then I did the 196 over it, the four-way cardigan. So see, it just depends if you do a matching. Uh, halters take on a lot of different looks. It just depends on the fabric you use and what you do with it. Okay, so I've done both the front and the back, and now I'm just going to do the vent. You always want to do your horizontal seam first, and then do your uh, the vent. And so I'm just going to line this up so you can see it, what I'm doing. Remember I pressed it, and whenever you pressed it, it's just a little easier to work with. So you're going to just fold that in, and you're going to start stitching. Now that is not going to be stitched by anything else, so I'm going to back stitch right there. Okay, now what you're going to do is kind of like stitching a dart. You're going to aim for this opening, and I know you can't see the opening, and we, the little camera we, is not adjustable. So I'm just going to come in, come in, come in, at an angle. You can see I'm getting closer to the edge until I go all the way right there to the, actually to the seam. Yep, and then I'm going to turn it around, and I'm going to sew the other way, and I pre-press that. That's it's just a little easier if you pre-press it. You certainly don't have to. And now I'm stitching like a dart. You can see I'm getting farther and farther away from the side until right there, and then I'm going to back stitch. Easy enough, and we'll do the other side again. Okay. So you are always said to woven? I am, you guys, I, I don't, I just can't be, con I hate to get too personal here. I cannot be convinced that, that there's a difference. I just can't be convinced. I don't care what, how much you pay for your machine. I, and I don't want to get into you know, a political argument about sewing machines and stitch lengths and all those other things. So I just always want to say, I don't change mine. If you change yours and you're happy and you like it, then just keep on keeping on. Okay? I will tell you I am not a sewing machine expert by any stretch of the imagination. So what I know in life is patterns. That's it. But I know on this machine, for me, all the machines I've ever had, I've never followed their guide, and I've never followed their needles. Sounds rebellious, but I don't feel like I'm rebellious. I just, 
I've been around the industry too long, and one machine says everything that comes into that, you know. Anyway, enough of that. Okay, so I've got these beautiful two vents now on the side, and we'll show you a little close-up of these. And then if you want to, we'll press these just so that the bottom of the halter is all finished, and then we're going to finish up the top. Let's go ahead and press them. So now I'll turn them right side out. And it's always look nicer, but you can see we've got our little V here. And it's cute, I like it on the side. I think it looks nice. Especially if the top's a little bit longer. It also gives you a little bit of, like, dinner room, you know? All right, that's done. Now we're going to put the bra insert into the top. Okay? What are your thoughts on industrial sewing machines? A hobby sewer recently told me she has an industrial machine. I never heard of that or thought of that. Well, industrial machines are incredible. They just, they sew fast. That's, that's why. You wouldn't have an, I don't think, I don't have an industrial machine. I don't think I need an industrial machine. Um, if you feel like you need, your machine's literally, you're bored and it's not going fast enough, then you'd need industrial. And they just sew fast. That's really it. They go through more layers, but even, I sew leather and I don't have a problem with the machine I use. So I, I think it's just up to you. They're not inexpensive. So I think it's definitely a splurge if you're thinking about doing that. Okay. How much ease do you use for this top? Um, not a lot. And so having said that, it would be your call. I'm going to give you some guidelines. Okay. It has gathers at the waist, at, I'm sorry, at the waist, at the neckline. So the darts, that's where the darts are. The darts are in the neckline. So if you take and want to have a negative ease, it will look odd to have gathers at the neckline and a negative ease. It's a little contradictory if you do it in a knit. So I probably got on mine about an inch of ease, just enough to that it doesn't pull negatively, but that it, it doesn't contradict the gathers that are across the neck. So the goal is to kind of have a little soft look, if that's fair. Okay, so what I've got is, let me just, I'm going to put a couple pins in here, just so I can hold it up to show you. I'm putting right sides together with the bra on the outside. It doesn't matter which way it is, but I'm just putting the bra on the outside. And I'm going to sew the, basically the armholes. So I'm just pinning the four points, kind of the edges of the neck edges, and you're lining the armholes. If you have the pattern, you can see right there in that guide sheet. Okay, here we go. So the neckline you can see is, is right there. Then the armholes go underneath and come around to the front. And then I, I didn't pin over there. Sorry, I lost it. Just make sure you've got front to front, which is why I put those pins in. Front to front, back to back. Okay, you can see that when I have that, here is, I keep losing it. <laughs> okay, there we go. So basically there's the halter. The, it's, it's right sides together, and I've got the bra on the outside. So where I'm gonna stitch is from the back, through the armhole to the front, and then on the other side, from the back through the armhole, the side seams are matched up. And you're just, I'm going to serge it. You know, you don't have to. It'll all be on the inside. I won't serge it. Because it doesn't really make sense to serge it. And I'll stick with my uh, reasoning. Okay, so I'm just going to put on a sewing machine and go zoop, two armholes, both sides. Very simple to do. They get questions. Peggy. Hi, Peggy. I don't know you. I know you don't. Oh, sorry. I know you don't, but why don't you use your built-in scissors on your machine? 
Oh, it's too slow. See, that does bother me, that it just, I, because I, I'll tell you, here, I'll do it for you. Um, so when you sew, right now what I'm doing is I'm sewing the armhole, the front to back, the armhole. And that thread got caught, sorry about that. So on the front, remember that I had that seam open. So be sure that seam is open and laying flat. And then because I start at the back, the side seam on the halter bra itself should go toward the back. So I'm just kind of peeking in and making sure those seams are aligned. And this portion continues. There we go. It's gonna come out the other side. Now I'll show you something when I finish this seam. And I don't know if I'm just too impatient, but what I have found is consistently when you cut, it's slow, but also it doesn't necessarily start up again the next time. Okay, so there I'm finished, and I think I'm supposed to hit, what am I supposed to hit here? Hmm. Oh, there it is. I don't even just say I don't even know. I haven't ever used it. <laughs> just seems to me to take forever. And again, it's that's not bad enough. But when I go to start the next seam, sometimes because you've cut that thread, it doesn't want to start correct. See, it, it back stitches, and I don't want it to back stitch. So it's just sewing the way it wants to sew, rather than the way I want to sew. I don't need it to back stitch at the beginning of every stitch, nor do I even want it to. So I guess when you use that scissor, it has to back stitch in order to um, get ready for the next stitch, I guess is the only thing. And probably for that I'm too used to industrial machines and they just, it's too slow. Okay, hang on, let me look at these. When you lengthen it, did you just add to the bottom? Yes. Is a Bernina machine worth all that money? I saw a Viking. <laughs> I hate to be, and you know, look, there's people who I know, what I know and what I've talked about in workshops, and I love to talk to women about their machines because everybody loves their machines. Most, most people love their machines. There are things, uh, there's reasons why I get a Viking, and the main reason is because of the needle positions because there are other companies where the needle positions, um, you can't do some of the methods that I that are factory methods. And so that's a problem. So with Bernina, some of those positions can't be done. Okay, so I'm gonna put this to the inside. And we're like getting a top, you guys. Okay, and what you wanna do is pull up, you're gonna have this opening and that's going to be the, that's the back, because I don't see any of my pins in it. So I'm going to put some horizontal pins here, just so I know. And I'm going to show you some optional stuff you can do. Yep. Okay, let me pull this up to you as well. And there's the back. And this is actually the front, because here's my pins. So I know that that's my front. And uh, you guys obviously don't have to put pins in here, but if you don't, you'll spend a more time saying what's the front and what's the back. I'm a double D cup with the bra, give me sufficient support. Hang on until I get there, and then I'm gonna talk about that in just a little bit. What do I have to change if I don't want the built-in bra? Nothing, just leave it out, leave out those two pieces, and then when I just sewed along the armhole and I sewed the bra to the inside, you would just finish that, tuck it inside, and top stitch. And then right here, where this is finished, where I'm going to finish this, you would just serge it and tuck it under. So nothing's different. And it's just le a little bit less work. I love that bra cup. I think it's really nice. Now, I, this is the seam I just sewed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to top stitch this. You do not have to do this. I'm just going to do it. 
And I won't even do two sides, so you don't have to watch me do two sides, but I'll just do the one side. So you're just gonna you're just gonna roll that seam slightly under. And give it a top stitch, oh you know, maybe like a quarter inch from the edge. And you don't need to press it because you can do this without pressing. You, you're just literally pulling that seam underneath and it's not gonna affect anything. All right. And you also have to remember where you are. You're on your underarm, so it's not like the world is gonna see it. I like, it's not so much that I like it because it stays in place anyway. I think I more just like the way it looks. So if you're not a top stitch look kind of Okay, so we did that one side. And again, I just like the way it looks. Okay. One of the fabrics you suggested in my bought is see-through for the Jags woven pants. See-through? How would you line? Um I don't think I'd line it. Like, you gotta think about what are you gonna wear with it. Don't go to a lot of work lining it. If you're gonna wear a longer top with it, let the pants be see-through. They're not gonna see anything. So, it, it depends on the context of kind of what you're doing or how you're doing it. All right, so this is this little open tube here, and I'm gonna surge this. I'm gonna surge the top, and I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do. I still know it's the front because I've got my little pin here to help me tell me what's front and what's back and then we're going to show you how to finish it give me a second I'll answer the questions So this is really a fun part, you guys. The bra cup is not going to go in until the very, very end. So right now we're just going to, we've got the whole thing's finished, but what we need is we need this portion that kind of um, holds everything in place. So I'm going to show you what I do, and then you can decide what you want to do. There are so many options out there that's just a lot of fun. Let me answer these questions first. Hi, Peggy. What needle positions do you use most? Um, well, when I'm sewing, I'm just in the center needle position, but when you're doing a, a uh, fly front, you're going to go all the way extreme left and all the way extreme right. And it's not so much, for me, it's the needle and the feet. Because when you use those conjunctively together, and you got a zipper involved, the feet and the needle should be able to align and correlate with one another. And there, a lot of machines out there won't do it. Um, Viking well, okay, that's why I've been a Viking loyalist for a long time. They don't give me any money, but I just really like their machines, okay? Peggy, could I use 615 Kathy's blouse without the sleeves in order to make 619 Jessica's favorite halter? Um, I would have, to, I don't know, I'd have to, you know, I'd have to have a little more time to look at the patterns and see what the differences are. Off the top of my head, I don't know. Okay, you can try it though. Okay, so we're gonna cut this elastic. And I know we've talked about cutting this before. I'm gonna cut it, you can cut it to any width you want. I'm gonna cut it thin. Because I don't, I just, I want it thin. And I'm gonna, just to, I, I've got a strip here that's about 20 inches long. It's way more than I need. You don't need to do this much if you don't want to. And when you cut this elastic, your key, you guys, is you got to stay within the same rib. If you cross ribs, it will, you know, the little elastic will spread out. It won't continue, but see, I'm right in the ribs, and that elastic will work beautifully. 
So I'm going to use, I'm going to cut two of those. I'm going to cut one for the front and one for the back because I'm going to show you how to finish it. You have, you have two sergers. I have three, but that's beside the point. You have two sergers that you can see what brands and what is used, what brands and what's used for. This is a Viking. It's a Husky Lock S21. And this is a Victory Baby Lock. I find that for speed and changing and in doing a rolled edge, I use my baby lock because it switches over so much easier for me. They, I think, kind of dumbed that whole process down. And so I really like how quick and easy it is. Um, this is a five thread overlock. And so if I do overlock, which I rarely do, I use that machine to do overlock. Okay. Okay. All right, so I've got my two little pieces now. So what you're gonna do, and you're gonna be able to see this in the camera, is I'm going to take the part I just surged, which is actually the neckline opening, and make sure you've got the inside up. You're gonna lay your elastic inside here, and you're going to wrap this over. You're just gonna fold this over. This is your neckline edge. And you're just gonna st stitch it in place. And because you're not stitching this any other place, you would back stitch. All right, and just fold it over. Don't stitch on the elastic. Just enclose the elastic. Now, I'm gonna give you some other options. This is the easiest, easiest thing to do. And then at the end, that neckline is wider. And so as you fold it over, it won't go all the way to the edge, which is exactly what you want. Okay, this is really fun and really easy to do. All right, you're gonna do the same thing to the back and just leave these pieces loose. Don't worry about them for right now. That's why I said cut two pieces. You could use one piece. I don't really see any advantage of using one piece. You use such a little small amount of elastic, I don't think it's a big deal. But if you wanted to use one, you just have to make sure it doesn't pull out. All right, so we're going to do it again to the other side. I'm going to fold this over. I'm going to back stitch it when I start. Just be sure not to stitch on your elastic. You, you're just making a little tube. You know, you could just sew this and then thread your elastic through it. I don't want to do that. I really. You know, this is meant to save you some time, not create more time for you. That's my front pin. It was in the way, so I have to do that. Well, I've got some questions. Hang on just a second, and I'll again get to the edge and back stitch. Okay, so now I've got the front and the back with a tie. The reason I say, you guys, there's lots of options is I've seen some really cute halters in this store, and I was going to go through and give you a bunch of pictures, but I know y'all have seen a lot of cute halters, but one of the one time I saw a halter and it had chains on it. The, ch the neck, what was going around the neck had chain on it, and it was adorable. It was just really, really cute. And so this elastic could represent a lot of different stuff. Um, is there a difference between overlock and surging? Well, overlock is the five thread. So that's when I was saying overlock, that's what I was talking about. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to pull this, and that's what creates your gathers. Okay, and then you're going to pull the front, which creates your gathers. And it makes that really cute neckline. And then you're going to tie this. And just tie it in a knot, but don't tie it in a really, really tight knot. Just tie it in a knot. Okay, so now it's time to go try it on. You try it on, and you adjust these knots. Now, I've made this more than once. Okay, here's your halter. I've made it more than once, so I know about how long my little string needs to be for me to like this. So once you know that, you can sub it out with other stuff, like the first time I did a chain, you can't really know how long the chain is unless you've done it with this first. And once you've done it with this, it will really help. Once you know how long these are, you can tie them really, really tight, clip the ends, 
and then tuck the ties inside the loop. Like for instance, mine, it doesn't have any knots there because I've, I've adjusted them, I've cut them off, and, I, and the knot is somewhere, I'm, it's not showing. So you can't see it, it doesn't rub your shoulder, it's not up there, it's not a big deal, you don't even see it. Okay, so you're gonna, you're gonna put this on and you're gonna adjust it. You've got the halter bra inside there, the bottom's all finished because it's got the little vent here on the side and you're going to stand in the mirror with this little halter on and you're going to put these bra cups. I even picked a bra cup that had an underwire because it doesn't matter. You can actually do any kind of bra and you're gonna position them and then once you have them in position, you're gonna put pins holding this exactly where it should be. You're gonna take it off and you're gonna sew right those bra cups right in between. I would put them in between the bra and the outside. I wouldn't put them to where they were showing because they're not gonna, it's not gonna be as pretty looking. So this underwire, you don't obviously stitch the underwire, but you can stitch right above it. It's just foam and you can actually stitch an underwire into your bra cup. So I just cut apart a bra, cut it off, and you can just put it right in. Very, very simple to do, but you gotta stand in a mirror, put it all on, you know, adjust everything. When you first put it on, you might think, ah, oh, this is crazy, man, it's way too long, or da 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 da. It just takes a little bit of adjustment. So be patient with that process and it's adorable. Look how cute this is. And it's got a built-in bra and it's comfortable as can be. And again, you can wear it with so many different things. I'd love to add elastic collar to this. I'd love to add an elastic collar. Classic. Oh, I'd love to add a classic. I'm sorry, thank you, Brett. <laughs> a classic collar to this. You guys, whenever you ask me a question and you ask at the end, is it possible? I, my, my first response is always, anything's possible. And then I have to filter that response because I, I have no idea of your vision. I would say, go for it, play with it, you know, do whatever you want with it. It's a very easy sew. You just saw this and that's done. And it's cute as can be. Put your body in there and it'll really look adorable. Can you tell me the link again to donate to this cause today? Thank you. Um, center of the page on silhouettepatterns.com. Go to the center column, top link, and hit, it says Feeding America. I think, did it say Feeding America? Feeding America. Click on that, it'll take you to the Fit to Stitch page. Silhouette Patterns is a for-profit business. Fit to Stitch is a non-profit. So we don't want you to donate through, fit to, through Silhouette Patterns because you can't write it off, but if you donate through Fit to Stitch, you can write it off. Okay, so that's why we did it that way. Um, where do you purchase bra cups? I don't know. Um, I'll give you two options. There is a um, Monica Bravo bras. Monica Bravo. So she used to teach with me. She's a doll. Absolutely a doll. And then her mother, Anne St. Clair. Google e search for either one of those. And I think they both have bra cups. I, I don't know. I couldn't swear on that. But good place to start. If not, search for bra cups. See what comes up. I don't know. Okay. So the next thing we want to make, we'll put our little halter to the side here that is absolutely adorable, is I'm going to show you a picture. And this picture is a, um, a little headband. And the reason we're doing this is because the word on the street is that those poor frontliners have, are killing their ears. So you don't have to mass make these. These are just for you because they're actually now, you know what, you knew what was going to happen next because we're all going to have to wear masks for a little while. They're becoming fashionable. So I decided I would make one to match my outfit. So I did. <laughs> and I'm going to show you how to make them. If you don't decide you don't want to wear them with your outfit, you can always just decide to um, wear them as a scarf. Anyway, <laughs> so I'm going to show you how to make this. Okay, you're going to start with a piece of fabric. You want it to be knit and you want it to have to stretch in the direction of what you cut it. And it's going to be 19 by 9. 19 by 9 is a rectangle. I made this pattern for a gentleman who's making these to sell. Um, there's a place here in Dallas that is actually manufacturing them to be sold for fashion. You know, I knew this was going to come. We knew this was going to come, right? What I did do, you guys, is I did get the buttons in. So these are our fun little buttons. I'll put it right there. 
you want the buttons to be fairly good size. And those are the ones I put up on the site. The button, the number of the button is 3257. The leopard that I'm sewing on is 3263. And the snake was 3238. I didn't tell you those. Okay, so you're gonna start with the nine by 19, okay, piece of fabric. So what I did is I sewed it halfway. Just turn it in half widthwise, and I just surged it, which I uh, didn't think you needed to do. Then I'm gonna turn it inside. And so those ends are finished. I mean, the middle is, the sides are finished, and the ends are open. So you're gonna lay it down. You're gonna um, split the seam between the two. So the seam is right down the middle now. So basically, I guess if I measured this, this would be four and a half inches wide. It's still my 19 inches long. And you're gonna take, and you're going to put one end, fold the ends to the middle, and you're going to put one end into the other. And you can press it or whatever, just turn the seam allowance under. Okay, I'm gonna pin that just so that I can see that it's all turned under. Go to both sides and just turn under. Turn under three eighths is what I calculated. All right, so just go all the way around and turn under those three eighths. And you're just gonna do one stitch and it's gonna hold everything in place. So I'm gonna put this under the little camera so hopefully we can see it. You want the seam that is that's been sewn, you want that to be up. And what you're going to do is I'm going to take out my pin and I'm going to sew stitch halfway. I'm going to stitch this to the middle. I'm going to stitch this to the middle. And right there where all those are coming together, you can see that my seams are turned under. You're going to stitch it. I'm going to give it a back stitch because nothing else is, this is it. There's only one stitch here that's holding the whole thing together. Okay. I'm going to cut my threads. I back stitched on both sides. And you have a bandana. All right, then you're going to put it on. put it on I've already got it on does it need to be knit it doesn't need to be but um, I'll, I'll, let me answer that question just a minute I'm gonna I forgot my earrings are in place watch your earrings okay don't rip your earrings out of your head but there you go okay so once you have it on you're gonna position your your buttons here over your ears it actually turns out that the buttons go about halfway if you if you put the headband down like this the buttons go on about halfway in the middle, is what I figured out doing this one. So, but I would recommend you put it on. So if you're doing it for somebody else, it's about halfway in. Because remember, the mask has elastic in it, so the mask is gonna be fine. But this is very comfortable. It's very stylish, don't you think, girls? You could put your, you know, you could bring your bangs down if you want. My head's all back, but you know, it can do however you want. And you've got this cute little headband and it won't kill the back of your ears. Fun? So not only can we look really fashionable, we can be safe. If you don't do it knit, if you go to the very center of the back of this band, I'm gonna show you here, you can do it out of woven and just put like a four inch, five inch piece of elastic. Use your two inch wide elastic back here again. And you could just put a two inch wide piece of elastic back there and make the rest of it woven so that it will still stay top to the head. If you do it woven all the way around, that's not gonna cut it. It's gotta have some stretch to it. So you can take a portion of it and section it to be elastic. Don't put pins in your mouth, folks. I put pins in my mouth, but you guys don't put pins in your mouth. I'm never gonna tell you not to put pins in my mouth. I put pins in my mouth. I love this. I think this is so cute. All right, so I think we've done everything we, we had on for today. You could even do the no-sew buttons, you know that? 
<laughs> but the bigger the button, the easier it is to put those elastic rings around. You guys told me not to say the word mask, and I did. Is that okay? All right, what else can we help you with? This was all about feeding America. So the goal of today is to feed America. And we really appreciate you watching, you being here. We'll let donations go through Monday because there's a lot of people in need right now. So we want, you know, we want to turn this around as quickly as possible. And clearly you know that everything you give goes to Feeding America Plus. We, we donate as well, but we're not keeping any of this for us. It's all going 100%, okay? Do you sell bra cups? I do not. I do not. You can go to, um, you can just search for bra cups, and I would imagine there would be a couple sites that come up. I think Joanne sells them. I've never really bought bra cups, to be honest. I don't need bra cups, but we're not going to go there. Okay, so <laughs> anything else we can answer? And then you can get back to your Saturdays. That's all right, y'all are just chatting away. I can say hi to everybody, but I never get to see the little chat section, so I don't know who's here and who's not, but glad you're here. Can you show us where you sewed it together? Yep. I'll show you under the little, yeah, I'll show you under the little cam right here, so you can probably see it a little bit better. Okay, see right there? So what you do is you have it, I'm gonna put my hand in front of there, because my, you're telling me it will focus there you go so and I'm gonna show you the back side there you go so all you're doing is bringing the, the nine inches together and overlapping them how long are your elastic loops the one on the halter I probably did them about 20 inches each just to start they're not gonna end up that long mine end up only being 12 each one it just depends on how low you want the neckline. There's lots of variables. Please show us how to sew in the bra cup. All right. So you're going to put the bra, I mean, you know, you gotta put it on, right? You gotta make sure the front's in the front and the back's in the back. You're gonna put this thing on and you're gonna position the bra cup. Let's just say it's perfectly positioned. And when I perfectly position it, when it's on my body, I'm gonna put some pins, and I'm gonna put these pins to where, you, got, you understand how to put it on? All right, so we'll get rid of the headbands. These headbands are adorable, you guys. You can do them in so many different colors, and they're just fun. Okay, so here what I did is I pinned uh, four places, okay, so that the bra cup is on. And it doesn't matter which side you sew from. I'm gonna leave the bra cup in there. I'm gonna go single layer to where it is and just literally sew, you can feel the bra cup. And remember it's foam, so I'm just gonna sew right through it. And you're just going to kind of work it flat as you go around. When you get to the, um, what, the underwire? Don't stitch to the underwire, just stitch above it. Now remember I'm doing this on the right side of the fabric. Yeah, I think you have to do it on the other side of the fabric. I've actually got it turned the wrong way. But I'm gonna stop it. Just because I've done enough, you'll be able to see it. Let me get this out from underneath. Okay, and then now when I put down this, that bra cup is sewn in. Okay. So you just put it on, position it, put pins around it, and then you literally just stitch around the circle, okay? If you make the halter out of a knit, what would you do differently? It is out of a knit. You don't really, you guys, whenever you're doing a top and it's um, no sleeves, there's not much difference between a knit and a woven. Like think of the tank top. Unless you do a negative ease, 
There's no difference between um, a knit and a woven. So you don't have, there's no difference. If you're doing sleeves, then that, that's what changes everything up because you have to have mobility. But if you have no uh, sleeves, you have free, complete freedom and freedom of mobility and how you wear it is totally up to you at that point, okay? Hopefully, sometimes I think if we have some logic, it really helps us go through the process. Do you sell sergers? No, I do not. Uh, bottom line, what is your advice for double D cup? Just see how a bra insert works. If you don't like it, just wear your bra. If I had, if I didn't have a bra on, if I had a bra on, you would never see my straps anyway. So it depends on your end goal. My end goal is the look. It's not to have a halter on and be bare shouldered and bare backed. It's just the look of the halter. So my, you know, you have to first determine what's your goal and then work it backwards to decide what you want out of that, okay? And then you can do the cup size or the cups or the non-cups or whatever you wanna go from there. Um, so when the bra cup goes closest to your body, not in between the layers, I would put it in between the layers. When you go to position it, position it, it there's not a right and a wrong, it's totally your call. It's however you decide you wanna do it, okay? All right, so how are we doing on time? Hey, we're doing good. See how the halter is so quick to make. And let me just say to you, if you cut out two halters at one time and sew them both at the same time, it's even faster. You can get two little cute halters made in no time. And remember, your jean jacket looks great with the halter. Your 196, you know, I love it with the halter. And also your 83, okay? All right, any other questions? How long are the loops? Oh, for the face mask, they're adjustable. They're adjustable. You guys make one? We have some mask sewing experts out there. I haven't made near as many as some of you have made. I've made a lot, but not near. I mean, I've got a mask down to where I don't think, think it takes me 30 seconds. It's so fast. But those are just whatever they would adjust on the face. Everyone I did, I just, let, I just tied them and left them kind of a loose knot so that if somebody put them on, they could actually adjust. You know, obviously if they're a bigger face, it has to be a wider mask, okay? All right, so you'll figure that out. You don't need me for that. Probably don't need me for any of this, but we're here and we're raising money together and that is a fun thing to do together. And you know what, we're almost through this, you guys. I think we're almost to the end. The next few weeks will be very telling we have a workshop in Minneapolis the end of May. My plans are to be there, but we'll see. We won't do anything that's not safe because we're really into safety here. Um, how much fabric for the halter top? Depends on how long you make it, but you'll need probably two yards. Um, if you're not doing the bra, you just need one yard. But if you're doing the bra, it's kind of like a tank top. You need another set inside. All right, so our plans now are to see you Thursday we have a YouTube. We'll see you not this week because there's not a webcast, but we'll see you next time. All right. Thanks so much for being here. We really appreciate it. Mwah. Love you all. Happy sewing from Silhouette Patterns. Thanks. Bye.